Don't leave while you're hot, this how I may screwed up, may screwed up. Mason Darrell Betha, a.k.a. Mace, born August 27, 1975. Whatever happened to Mace? It's a simple question that seems to become more and more convoluted the more you ask. It's not easy to understand how, or better yet, why a person having the success he was so early in his career and at such a young age would make the decision to give it all up. His debut album went number one on the charts and sold 5 million copies. His second album went gold and could have done double the numbers had he promoted that instead of a future life path that was a complete contradiction to everything he spoke about on the project. Of course, I'm referring to his decision to become a pastor, which to this day seems no one with a real sense of independent thinking ever believed was genuine. Don't worry though, he would come back to music, leaving the church on multiple occasions not to become a construction worker or librarian, oh no, to jump right back into secular music, street nicknames like Murder Mace, Big Chains and chasing Diddy around a studio with a faulty contract it seems not even he understood. Listen Mace, you're never getting free from Sean Combs. Your catalog is said to be worth $25 million. Diddy is not selling or looking to be shamed into giving it back to you. When he dies, his kid's kids will eat off that contract, while you're somewhere still trying to convince a cult you're touched by angels. Mace isn't touched by angels at all. Neither are you or I. The thing about religion is no matter who's right, it excludes too many people. The thing about Mace preaching religion shows you exactly why it may not be the route to follow. But this isn't about that at all. Here are three reasons Mace's growth as an artist was stunted, and the lessons within the story young hip-hop artists can learn from. Let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. <laughs> Mace was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and at three years old, moved to Harlem, New York after his father left the home. He stayed there until 13 years old, moving back to Jacksonville because he was in constant trouble in the streets and not performing in the classroom. There, he picked up a basketball and started to dream of one day playing in the NBA. After a few years, he moved back to Harlem and continued to hoop with fellow hoop dreamer Cameron. Once again, his academics weren't in order and his skills were self-realized not good enough to acquire a Division I scholarship, so he began to take rap more seriously. He helped form a group called Children of the Corner, or Children of the Corn in short, in relation to the film by Stephen King with Cameron, Big L, and a few others under the name Murder Mace. In 1996, Mace was introduced to Kuda Love, a road manager for Biggie Smalls, through his twin sister who introduced him to Puff, leading to Mace signing the worst contract of his life. Stunt number one, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. While some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In other words, doing anything for money will only leave you hurt in the end. The perfect beginning to the confusion that halted Mace's career was his love for money and worldly things and doing whatever was most popular at the time to get it. In doing so, he brushed over the paperwork with Sean Combs where in the fine print it probably read something like this. Okay nigga, I'ma give you this little $250,000 which you think is a lot of money right now cause you broke your shit and wanna shine as soon as possible but aren't willing to learn the business first and take your time. What you are willing to do is give me all your publishing masters forever which with your obvious talent will make me rich forever. Here, take this and do what thou wilt. I'm sure that's exactly what it said. Mace with a huge fake platinum chain so popular in that era grinned from ear to ear, put his thumb in his one dimple and signed the deal. 
they all toasted in one accord but different intentions. Mace thinking he was finally on and could go back to the hood. Like, see, I told y'all I was the best of y'all. Now worship me. And Diddy thinking, this nigga just gave me the means to feed my bloodline for generations. And he's smiling like it's all good. I know he gonna try to get that shit back later, but I'ma just give him the runaround until he can't fight no longer. Either way, I ain't giving that nigga shit. Either way, Mace returned every cent of that initial investment and millions more. He immediately began working, appearing on hit song after hit song with artists like the notorious B.I.G., 112, and of course Diddy himself. His first album, Harlem World, released late October 1998 and was a smash album on the charts where it debuted number one selling almost 200,000 copies first week and had hit songs like Looking At Me, What You Want and Feel So Good leading the way. It sold 4.8 million copies in total, making Mace one of the leaders of the new school late 90s early 2000s rappers. With Diddy by his side, at least musically, he was destined to become the next big thing. Sadly, later on, he'd realized that contract was the worst thing he ever signed and began his social media and radio attack on Sean Combs for his bad business practices and holding artists against their will. But sorry Mace, you guys signed the deals you did. Diddy never did and never will care about how you feel. Stunt number two. Jeremiah 14 verse 14 Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them, or appointed them, or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. The second growth stunt that took Mace from a budding rap superstar with potential Jay-Z success was him surprisingly leaving the game to become a full-time pastor. Was Mace a false prophet though? Well, let's look at his actions, because if it's one thing a false prophet would be good at selling you, it's false words in the name of Jesus, all while lining their own pockets, or in Mace's case, a way to escape his past, according to his longtime acquaintance, Killer Cam. Mace and label Bad Boy wasted no time trying to continue capitalizing off his first album's success and released his second album, Double Up, nine months later. For whatever reason, Mace's attitude with the release of this album was different in that he refused to perform and promote the songs like he did on the first, as he wasn't feeling fully compensated for the first as yet. Instead, he announced through manager at the time, Magic Johnson, he would only do spoken word performances on tour and not the hit songs. As a bird could tell the difference between a worm and a Twizzler, anyone could see that was a bad idea. If I became famous for selling green peppers, debut a shop called Green Peppers, you enter to buy some fresh green peppers and see me selling prayer cloths like Reverend Ike, how would you feel? Mace was either ignorant, wanted to stick it to Diddy after realizing the stupidity of signing a deal for pennies on the dollar Diddy made, or the things said about him mainly by Cameron and people like Lord Jamar and Jim Jones were in fact true. That the streets got hot and Murder Mace wasn't with bodies dropping, especially his own. According to Jim, Mace was never about the street life like he and Cam were, but because of his affiliation, he became a target just as much, and when street guys that are never mentioned brought heat to Mace, he ran to Atlanta and started preaching behind the safe walls of the church. Rumors that haven't been confirmed, but acknowledged by so many that were around directly or in air distance and may know just as well. Stunt number three, Job 8 verse 13. Such is the destiny of all who forget God, so perishes the hope of the godless. In other words, a harsh judgment will come to a person that claimed to know God and turned their backs on him will only mean he himself can't lead non-believers to God. It's like you offering to ask someone else to subscribe to this channel only to give them links to yours. 
after Mace retired from rap April 1999 because according to him, he didn't like the hellish path he was leading people down and the portrait he was creating of the streets being a place to exalt, he delved deep into the church and as far as Cameron believes, went too far into his new Pastor Mace persona. For the next five years, Mace was preaching and leading multiple congregations with a message of you too can change, wash away your wicked ways, and serve God like I do. Only to return to rap music as if he never left, with the same secular dress code, celebration of everything he denounced, and even went back to the murder Mace name. His third album, Welcome Back, released August 2004 and sold 180,000 first week and later went gold, marking Mace's second biggest album, yes, also under Bad Boy. He began running with superstar 50 Cent and G-Unit, stating he needed to look the part in order to appeal to a different audience that needed his guidance to salvation, I guess. He'd retire once again in 2007 from ministry, but dabbled in music here and there, releasing features for Kanye West and managing French Montana. He even announced a fourth album in 2013 and his desire to sign to Drake or Kanye West's label. With one foot in and one foot out, his congregation began to question his motives, leading to him bouncing around congregations and has also been on tour with Bad Boy in 2017. As recently as the beginning of this year, he's found a new pastoral home but hasn't ruled out the possibility of a return to hip-hop. So like anything else Mace, it's up in the air. All in all, Mace's music career and public life reminds me of the saying, a man will make his bed the way he wants to or was taught to. However it's set, that's the sleep he'll get. Maybe I made that up, but listen. We can't forget what Mace has meant to the genre of rap and how many that followed him borrowed his style here and there. Whoever he became as a person is his business to build how he sees fit. No, he didn't become a huge rap star long term like expected, but his story is just as important and his transgressions can be just as helpful to someone else. Salute to Mace, much respect, but for these reasons, as a musician or artist, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.